Mm. Hey fellas, how's it going? Started a new project the other day. Mm. This one is the uh, 148 scale Great Wall Hobbies F15C. But what's really cool about this is I am building it for uh, a guy that was a maintenance crew chief on the actual plane that I'm building. And this was, a, I guess, uh, back in the mid-1990s, I believe. And uh, it's, it's cool because the, the plane that he was a crew chief on, Afterburner decals came out with a set of decals for, for that exact plane. <clears throat> so uh, I got to talking to this guy, and uh, he sent me a bunch of pictures. So let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at my mess that I got going on. He sent me a bunch of pictures. And for those that are too young to remember, these are actual photographs that uh, were developed. I think you can still get photographs developed. I'm not sure. Um, but he sent me a bunch of pictures. I've got them categorized so I can reference them quickly. Got the cockpit, the exhaust, um, the, uh, the decals. This is the plane I'm going to be doing. And from what I understand, from what he told me, he painted the artwork on inside, inside of the air brake. And uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, this is what I'm going to replicate, and I'm going to create um, uh, uh, kind of like a diorama. And the base, I'm going to try to, to replicate the concrete. Um, you've got the owner of the, the future owner of the plane standing behind it. And uh, there's going to be a pilot installed, and the gears are going to be down. And for for all the people that give me crap on YouTube about why don't you build the gears down? You're lazy. Do, 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 do. Uh, yes, I can build uh, planes with their landing gear down. It's not that big a deal. Um, but that's this is pretty much what what it's going to look like. Hopefully, when I'm finished, I am going to do something a little bit differently uh, with this video series. I'm going to kind of break it down and get a little more in depth on how I do things. So. Um, Hopefully, you guys will get something out of it, and uh, uh, I guess we'll get on with uh, the first part, which is going to be uh, taking care of the intake trunks and the inside of the exhaust. Okay, fellas, <clears throat> what I'm working on now, <coughs> excuse me, and what I typically like to do uh, right off the bat with these modern jets, excuse the camera wobble, is uh, clean up the intakes and get those painted because those are going to go in before I can close up the fuselage halves. And usually these come with in two pieces and uh, when you put them together there's always going to be a seam down the middle along the along the sides there and uh, you know it's, it's always a pain in the butt to try to clean those out. So what I've done is I've kind of sand those out with my I've got a couple different sanding sticks here and uh, just do the best I can to to clean out that seam and see we can see right here I've used my um, uh, CA glue and uh, pigment to kind of clean up and knock down some of that fill in the areas right there where it's going to be seen the most then what I'll do is I'll come along and uh, just a second let's move over to the other bench um, now this gets kind of messy I've got some Mr. Servicer 1000 and I've really thinned this down even more um, with lacquer thinner and I'll take my hydra or my uh, my pipette and I'll suck up some of this uh, magic juice and if you can see here, before I get going, um, this was so thin, if I can get my camera to focus, that it kind of broke right along here at this corner. So from, from all the handling that I was doing with it. So what I did is I just put some CA glue on that corner, slapped down some uh, Tamiya tape, and then put another layer of CA glue on it. And that's gonna kind of act like act as a cast. I think if you broke your leg and uh, it uh, kind of reinforces that, that area where it kind of broke off. Now what I'm going to do, if I can get this 
usually I hold this up. Get a little bit more in here. So then what I'll do is I'm just going to spread this thin Mr. Surfacer along here and let it flow down. And you gotta kind of watch out because you'll get bubbles in it. You don't want to play with this too much after you put it in just because it dries really quick. So I'll leave this in here. I'll kind of suck out some of this stuff down here at the bottom and clean it out before it starts drying on me. You can see that. Then what I'll do is I'll set this down and I'll let that set and dry. And hopefully when I'm done, that'll all flatten out and uh, and fill in any other little seams back deep in there that uh, th that are there. And uh, I won't have to do any more sanding on it. Sometimes it takes two or three coats. And, uh, you know, sometimes I've had to go back in and kind of re-sand and redo it. But that's the best way that I can see to, um, that I that I found to, to remedy the seam line and the intakes. Especially on long ones like this. Sometimes they're short enough you can get in there and sand them, but uh, with these it's kind of hard to get in there. So I'm going to let that set. I'll come back, do the other side. Uh, I may put some more coats in it, and then I'll paint the inside of them. I have airbrushed the inside, but uh, that's sometimes difficult because you have to do it at a real low air pressure. Uh, otherwise, it'll get uh, it will get. Uh, all grainy on the inside. Let's see if I can suck some more of this out. And back here, this is where the where the exhaust is going to plug in, and you actually can't see much of this back here, so I'm not too concerned with with back in here. But uh, I want to try to get it as clean as possible. So that's how I do that. All right, guys. The uh, uh, getting the Intake trunks done, as you can see there, not perfect, but uh, I think it'll do. And basically what I've done is I put the two coats of the uh, Mr. Servicer 1000 in them. I kind of sanded away a little bit, and then I came back with Tamiya XF2, which is basically flat white. And I thinned it down a little bit, and I did the same thing with the uh, as I did with the Mister Surfacer. I just kind of dipped it in there, and uh, and I'm letting it dry. So I think that's as you can see, there are no seams. Uh, there's a little bit of goobers. I'll try to take care of those, but uh, you know, once it's in, you're not gonna you're not gonna see that much. You just want to make sure it's clear. Uh, of the seams and I think I got all the seams out and again it's not perfect but I think it looks pretty good all right well while my intakes are drying or my intake trunks I've been working on the bottom of the fuselage and uh, the owner just the lighting a little bit the owner wanted a communications door uh, because we're going to depict it the way it is in the picture. <clears throat> um, apparently there is a communications door right here. And the kit had a had panel lines on both sides. And he said that this one needed to be eliminated and that this one needed to be moved over uh, just a bit. So what I did is I eliminated, eliminated both of them, cut out a square hole, um, Put a real thin piece of plastic card over top and then cut up uh, real thin pieces of plastic card to kind of mimic uh, what was depicted as the inside of that, uh, uh, that, that hole that I cut out. And then I made a little door out of plastic card. And this is going to have a bunch of switches on it. I still need to uh, detail that up and... I'll probably get stretch sprue 
to make the switches. And then this will go in there just like so. And then there'll be a wire plugged into that, which will go out and attach to the figure behind the plane. So I'm still working on that. Uh, the other thing that I've done is I've put magnets where the missiles are going to go. You can see here I've got magnets and they're all flush with the body. It's going to have a center line fuel tank as well. So I attach magnets there and then that way I, I went ahead and reinforced the magnets on the inside with uh, CA glue. Uh, but what I'm going to work on now is the exhaust and see if we can flash up a couple pictures here. Alright, with the exhaust, the F-15 has <clears throat> kind of a cool exhaust and I've, I've painted this a few times. Let's see if he's got a good one in here. So what I want to do is try to paint that on the inside. And I've done this several different ways. Uh, one, one jet that I painted, <clears throat> I basically coated the inside white and then taped off and then sprayed from behind like a, a, dark, a dark color. And uh, it, it was kind. Of, it looked okay. And I'm gonna try something a little different this time. <clears throat> so what I've got is I've got some sepia and some smoke-colored oil paint. So what I first want to do is prime the inside. And I always paint these the inside out. That way I can, uh, when I go to paint the outside, it's a lot easier to mask off the inside by just putting in some uh, a sponge or something. To, uh, to mask it off. So I've primed it in white and um, now I'm going to, and I haven't, uh, I haven't clear coated it. So now what I'm gonna do is get a brush. And I'm just gonna do a wash to just kind of dirty this up. So this is just a little bit of uh, mineral spirits with some sepia oil paint. And we're just going to kind of get this a little dirty. And you don't have to be neat because if you see in the pictures, it's kind of a mess in there. Okay, try to get in here, and this is actually easier to do if you do it before you put it on, but, um, you know, when you glue these up, because these come in like five different pieces, the, uh, the exhaust fins, and when you glue them up, you're just going to have kind of a mess in there, so I decided this time just to put it together first, and we'll, we'll deal with painting it later. So, I'm going to let this dry, I'm going to do the other one, <clears throat> let it dry, and then we'll come back, Let's see if we can zoom in, so you can kind of see how that looks. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to take my oil paint, or my, uh, <clears throat> my smoke colored oil paint, I'm going to come in there and try to hand paint some streaks like they have there, so... Uh, that's what I'm going to do. We'll, uh, we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. So here is the exhaust. 
and I think it's actually pretty close. See that? What I what I did is I took uh, I did the smoke I did uh, lines with the smoke colored oil paint, and I kind of uh, played with it a little bit with some thinner, and then I came back with black, straight black, and I went down the certain sections, the raised sections there, and then I played with that a little bit. And uh, I think I got pretty close to what it looks like. So uh, once this dries, I'll hit it with a flat coat, and, uh, and then I'll be able to mask this off and then paint the outside the metallic shades, and we'll be good to go on that.